Yes, sir. What up, small boy? What up, brother Mo? It's good to have you in the building, man. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, it looks like you're making a little buzz out there right now. Everybody's hitting us up left and right, so it's only right to do an interview with you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would say so. Everybody's wondering who small boy is, so I guess well, let's uh, give him a little bit. Brief a little bit about myself. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, you know, uh, Mo City, where the music is known to be strong. Um, I'm a military brat, so I went from the United States to Germany a few times. Uh, I've managed to come across some very talented individuals in that time. Mr. 3-2, you know, Big Hawk, uh, Lil' O. I mean, countless others. I mean, there's so many. I mean, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I was trying to tell people a little bit of that, that, you know, you're a part of that H Town history because there's not opportunities that are available like that no more. You know, Mr. 3 2 has uh, gone, Big Hawk's gone. Yeah. But let, let's give a pause on that part for a second. I want to go a little bit deeper into your roots, you know? So, not just the H Town history that you have, but we want to go back, you know, in time, maybe like, uh, let's start, you know, small boy as a kid. You know, uh, uh, how, how was it for a small boy as a kid? I would have to say it was pretty, it was pretty normal, you know, military life, mostly uh, very disciplined, but always filled with music. My parents come from music. You know, my father performed at the Apollo in his younger day it, it, and he won. Right. Um, my mom sang with artists like uh, Tremaine Hawkins, The Mighty Clouds of Joy. You know, I know some people in the audience might know who those uh, celebrities are. And once we were born, it's like they stopped. So I felt like, you know, it was necessary for me to carry that torch, keep, ex you know, extending it outward, let them know that, you know, you didn't stop and have us in vain. It, it, it reached the soul of one of us at least. And I, you know, I basically want to take that bit of encouragement and put it in every bit of music that I have, no matter what genre of music it is. You know, if, if it's coming from the artist that comes to me, so I'm going to feel you basically. I don't care what it is you do, you know, just straight up like that music is me. Right. And with saying that music, real music, it's timeless. Never forget that. Real music is timeless. That gimmicky stuff y'all hearing on the radio nowadays, that'll fade away like yesterday's leaves. Right. Okay, so uh, let me see. Where were you raised at? Uh, like, I was born in Highland Park, Michigan, raised in Detroit. For a good portion of my life, I'd say about my first 12, no, 11 years. And then we moved from Detroit to Louisiana for a Pope Army base. And then from there, we went to Germany, back to Fort Pope, back to Germany, and doing another tour. Uh, beautiful place, you know, yeah. Europe. It really is. Right. You know, I was there when history took place, when they broke the wall down. I had a chunk, but then at the time, didn't know what I had and got rid of it. Right. You know, and nowadays it's, it's priceless. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, those are uh, more of my fond, fonder days. You know, a lot of people want to know, you know, you know, because some artists, you know, basically when they get interviews, they want to know if they went through a struggle, did, they, did their family break up, did they hit rock bottom or, or were they just, were you like a rich kid? Were you like a, you know? So tell me a little bit about that part. Well, we were like pretty much any other hardworking American family, you know, by my father being in the military, you know, most of the people that we knew that were civilians thought we were just living it up. Right. I'm not going to say that we were, you know, like 
bad or anything, but you know, it wasn't like we were just bossing it or anything. But, you know, my parents put in, you know, a lot of time yeah. you know, to keep a, a roof over our head, clothes over our back, et cetera. And uh, that work ethic, I believe, poured off into my music because I refused to let anybody work harder than me. So, so I know you were saying that your mom was like a gospel singer or like a, and your father was like a guitarist or something like this or what? Yeah, she was a, uh, her and her sisters actually were a uh, quartet and they were, they were pretty, you know, they were pretty jamming. What I regret is not having any recordings of them. Right. I have no proof of any of their works. Right. And uh, this is something I have to live with, you know, because right. all involved, mom, dad, those aunts, they're not here with us anymore. So once they left, everything magical about them left with them. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. And, um, okay, I, I have this quick question that people, I, I feel like people need to know about. Um, you, were, you mentioned your dad was at the Apollo and he won, right? <coughs> yes, and sir. And um, I know that later <laughs> on, you actually went to the Apollo. And uh, so how did, how did that happen? How did you, how did that even happen? You know? Well, uh, there was a group that I used to sing with, a very talented group of brothers. We called ourselves Kedijah at the time. Right. And we won the opportunity going to one of the um, competitions that they, they held here in Houston. And we won. And at the time, the prize was a chance to perform on Amber tonight at the Apollo. And nice. uh, he he uh, explained to us that if you accept, you have to pay your own way up there and your own living arrangements because apparently the winners that were winning in the past were going and destroying the hotel rooms. So, you know, we agreed. We got a four-door Grand Am and five brothers packed in that car from Houston, Texas, and drove to New York City to be a, a part, you know, of that program. The whole while, keeping in mind, um, we were under the management of Matthew Knowles, Beyonce's daddy, right. Destiny Child's how, management. How did, how did he come across you? Like, what was his first interaction with you? How, how did that happen? He saw us performing at a place called Cody's. A nice upscale, you know, type of uh, environment where you you dress in casuals, shirt and tie, you know, slacks, and you go and you see live entertainment. And they had a a, a time where they were giving the uh, amateur night kind of contest uh, uh, situations going on, and we won. Right. And Matthew approached me, and he was like, "You know, you guys sound really good. I would like to manage you." And he gave me his card. Right. The first dumb thing I did was pass that card off. I mean, did did you know who he was at that time? At the, at the time, I had not a clue right. of the man's um, not only mental capability, but uh, his, his, his go get it and make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, there's only one other person besides him that I know of, and that's Mo Hustle. Oh, man. That's crazy. You know, and um, the thing about it is when we met him, he was going, you know, I'm talking about the long way out right. of his pocket because he had that much faith in us. Mm -hmm. He knew what we, we were gonna make it. And oh, so so that's what you mean by by Mo Hustle. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you know, I, I believe in you, of course. So, yeah, of course. You know, I feel like if you're gonna have a you know, if you're gonna be pushing an artist, you have to believe in them, you know, first and foremost. But uh so yeah, so so were you excited when he gave you the business card or or, or what was your I was, I was really, you know, I wasn't impressed because at the time a lot of people were trying to give us their, you know, record label cards and stuff like that. Right. But he actually exchanged information with us right. and he called us back. You know, he kept in contact with us. So that was the first impressive thing, you know, to me that I liked. He stayed on top of his business. Yeah. You know, and he wanted to find out, okay. Those are the ones you want to work with, the ones that stay on top. Right. Of and he wanted to find out, yay or nay, are you guys with the idea of rolling with me or not. Right. So I don't know to spend any more time in this direction. So of course we said yes. And that was probably one of the best decisions of our lives. One of the worst was actually leaving him to go find someone else 
before he had the chance to do for us the things that he was trying to do. Right. You know. Awesome. Okay. Not many people can say that they were once managed by Matthew Knowles. That's amazing. Okay. So then you 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 go to the Apollo. Well, okay. So so you you get to the Apollo. What what happens? How do you feel? What, what what's the feeling? Share after, with us. After meeting countless stars like Lauren, LL, Cool in the Gang, Puffy, Total, Monica, uh, Kenny Green from Intro. After meeting all of them and rehearsing around them and sounding note perfect around them, you know, we, we had big Kool-Aid heads, you know, confidence, you know, talking big noise about what we were going to do when it's our turn. We did a Boys to Men medley and I started it off yeah. and I did a pretty good job. I think, you know, at the time, you know, you know, that part on, on, uh, on, uh, please don't go where Sean goes slowly. My eyes begin to see that I need you near and with me at all times. Yeah. When, hey, after I did that part, I already had the audience with us. We got to one significant part. And this is after, mind you, Matthew told us not to go. He said, I don't want you there for amateur night. I want you guys there as headliners. We was like, well, we earned this. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, hard head. And we went anyway. Right. First mistake, one of the guys forgot to rub the wood. Second mistake is when he cracked. And the third mistake is he cracked in front of an audience that booed cool in the game. You know, just because they were just tired of sitting in the cold waiting to be the third audience to be a part of the recording session. So, you know, Steve Harvey looked at us because he heard us rehearsing. He looked at us and he went, um, what happened? All I could do is shrug my shoulders. I don't know. And I left the stage way before the Sandman parted the curtains, you know, to get us off of that. But that, was, that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was having to go through the audience, back upstairs to the first green room to get your personal effects. That same audience that just booed you, you have to walk through them and they get another chance to laugh and jeer, you know, and do all of that. Uh, every step, I just uh, started feeling smaller and smaller, but it was a really powerful learning experience because that's where I met Lauren Hill, one of my favorite artists, nice. you know. Thank God she had to be somewhere else when all that debacle took place, but she gave me some uh, really good advice, you know, on on how to stay up on your, your yeah. vocals and whatnot. So yeah, it was a, it was a real powerful experience. All I could do after we lost was get back in that Grand Am, and that same day we started driving back to Houston. All I could do was laugh and think about what Matthew said. I don't want y'all going up there amateur night. I want you to go as headliner. And I'm looking at the, everybody else in the rest of the car. Everybody else is totally silent. The entire ride from New York City back to Houston. Nobody said a word. All I could do was laugh. I mean, because he told us. Right. That's amazing. But yeah, okay, so. All right. So let's uh, fast forward a little bit. Okay. So now you're. Okay, so what, what happens with the group? Well, naturally, we kind of uh, disbanded because a little bit after finding out we went ahead and did the uh, Apollo thing. He still was managing us at the time. Right. And um, we had a discussion where he just gave common information to any young artist. Remember this. Hold yourself down. If you're in a group, hold your position down strong because anybody can be replaced. Right. And that's what he told us. That's what he told the girls before he met us. You know, that's one of his uh, uh, regular uh, sentiments during every one of his speeches. You can be replaced. One of the members of the group took that personally. And um, I guess I, the only thing I can think of is because he offered no more than just, you know, what he thought was elegant writing skills, but it just sounded like an imitation of Babyface. Right. So that, that instantly made him replaceable. Okay. Right. So after taking that little bit you know, to his heart, feeling some type of way, 
he goes upon uh, his own energies to find another manager. Brings this information to us, talks it up like, you know, this man is going to get us in the studio, get us a demo, get us yada, 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 right now. We won't have to wait behind the girls. Right. So, again, loyalty to his word, we all just followed along. And that was the worst mistake of all of our lives. Because right. after after that, two weeks later, now mind you, just two-week in- increments, the girls got signed with Columbia. Mm. Now, he calls, Matthew calls Kenneth, oh, I didn't mean to say that name, calls Kay back and says, yo, the girls got signed. Come celebrate with us. Come sip some champagne. Again, his ego's on his shoulders. I translated that as in, look, guys, if y'all didn't believe in me before, now you can believe in me. You know, right. come back. You know what I'm saying? It's on and popping. Two weeks later, after that conversation takes place with him and Kay, that's when I find out that that even took place. So now, mind you, this is giving Matthew time to go, you know what? All right. I see how you feel about it. So when the girls came out with bills, I came instantly out with like a male version of bills to answer it. I sent it to the arena theater where he had an office at one time. They took the CD. I heard no response from them. And when I think about it logically and fairly, what I have answered, you know, it's like uh, now that the girls are on, you want to call me? You know, when I I, I I actually didn't have to do this, but I basically called you guys and said, come back. You still gave me the proverbial middle finger. So how was a man really supposed to feel about that? I need to let you know, Matthew, if you see this, it wasn't it wasn't your boy. Yeah, it wasn't me because I, I it was never mind. You, you, you get where I'm coming from. But anyway, um, yeah, it, you got to be careful of that. Young, the young artists have got to be careful of that. Not everybody ha- will have your best interest at heart. And you, you have to be careful, you know, because people will see dollar signs in the things that you do and um, will take advantage of that. You know, especially if you don't educate yourself on the business that you're trying to embark in. And then later on, want to get upset when more monies are getting into their pocket than yours. You know, it's it's a lot to this. It's not just getting on the mic and just rocking with you. It's more to it than that. All right. Well, that's amazing. Okay. So, all right. I know you had the history with the screwed up click that you were saying at the beginning, you know, with the three, two, little O, big hog. How, How did that, how did you get around that circle? I actually met um, Big Hawk through a couple of other people like um, Double D actually produced for uh, Rec Shop. And he knew a lot of individuals uh, at the time. And Hawk was one of those guys that he knew, Fat Pat's brother. And when we when we ran into each other, it was like musically we clicked, you know, and I, the first song I did was uh, my black sisters and my brothers, sons and daughters, fathers, mothers. This is something I give to you from my soul. And it goes, this one's for my people around the way. For all the ones who keep it play, you're made. For staying down with H-A-W-K. Make it thump, keep it real. Dirty south of my jeep. That's what I did with him. I did another one called, um, I told myself I wouldn't forgive this. Please forgive me, dear brother. But uh, it was hardcore. I was actually supposed to be on three. But I missed the third one, of course, professionals. I'm gonna keep that ball going. You're either there or you're not. So so how was it working with you know what now? What do you think about it now? Now that you know you're like, do you go back sometimes and think like, wow, I really worked with this legend right here, this great Texas legend that everybody oh, loves yeah. so much. Oh yeah, because I got material that they haven't heard yet. It's like unreleased one. <laughs> it's it's unreleased. Yeah. Um and a lot of Hawks fans 
have not heard this music. A lot of Mr. Three Tunes fans have not heard this music, you know, because, you know, we, we would get together in the studio and come up with magic. I remember Bushwick, Bill, before he passed away, came to our studio and he was listening to some of the music we was playing back. And it happened to be on my part. And I was rapping and singing at the same time. <clears throat> he was like, y'all, who, who is that? Who is that son? Who is that? <laughs> and I was uh, I was like, me and uh, Chicken Hawk and, and Pat. He was like, who is that rapping right there? I'm like, that's me. And he just turned around and he said, yo, this is what y'all need to push right here. This big boy right here, this is what y'all need to push. Yeah. Everybody in the room's facial expression went from, you know, jovial and in the mood to solemn, like that was the worst news they could have heard in their lives. <laughs> As if I would actually blow up and forget my peoples. That that's that that's that bust the snake move type. Yeah. Janky promoter type. You ain't a friend, you a F boy kind of, I don't move like so that. So basically he gives you your props and everybody else is upset that he gave you your props. Right. And I, and to this day, you know, I had to, I try to tell you, I had a Kool-Aid smile because for one, our studio was being graced with a ghetto boy legend. You know what I'm saying? Bushwick Bill. Yeah, I've been in, in my spot with, with, with Rashid, you know, you know, before. And he, he's, he's quite a character, man. Rest yeah, in peace, Bushwick rest in Bill. Peace. Yeah, yeah, he was one of a kind. But yeah, okay, so that's that, that's amazing. Okay, and then so you work with okay, so you said Chicken Hawk. Is that what they used to call Hawk? Uh, no, that's what that's they used to call guy. another producer that worked okay. with them at Red Shop. Right, because I don't want to confuse nobody that doesn't know the history. So that's why I brought that now, up. Now, Big Hawk, I was just I just knew him as John Hawkins, Big Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and my my brother because he was one of the coolest. Cats you could ever come across, like, like for real. Just, hey, he would say, hey, smile, boy. Uh, say, my, um, I ain't, I ain't trying to say nothing bad about your people for nothing, man. But I don't think them boys handle you right, man. He say, give me a little bit of time. Let me work this little deal, and I'm gonna come back for you. That's cool. I said, uh, hell yeah, that's cool. I said one. <laughs> we just some brothers that were trying to put whatever we had to offer on the table to come up with a meal to get paid off of. I'm basically free agent. He was like, enough said. Let me let me do what I got to do. You know, so um tragedy struck before that got a chance to, you know, transpire. All right. Well, we have about six minutes left. So um I guess. So we talked about three two. We thought we we talked about Big Hawk, um, little O. You know, just give a little quick, little simple. You know, how did oh, you yeah. run across Big O? Uh, we were uh, working on the Fam album. Um, I I normally carry some little flyers with me, but I I, I don't have them. But uh, we were working on the Fam album, yeah. and uh, Double D invited him to a song that we were working on. Um, I'm pretty sure y'all might have heard it before. Just cause your bitch want me and I let her sex me. Don't you think I love that hoe? You knew she was kinky. Saw how she was sneaking backstage after every show. That was originally on our album. Then he put it on one of his, I guess, underground mixtapes or albums. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope, man. Oh, he bust. He, oh, he bust cold with yeah. it. Yeah, that's he came with it. He came oh, with it. Oh man, that's what's up. Man. The rat <laughs> with, with the cheese. cheese. The he came with, with it. Cheese, man. He came okay. with it. Yeah. All right. So, since we just got a few minutes left, all right. Let's. I feel like we should end it with Small Boy, the industry giant. What you have become today, and what we're pushing our project right now. You know, I try to tell people that you work with passion. You know, because uh, I've never seen nobody have so much passion for music like you do. So let them know about your new project. You know, give us some of those small boy feelings about what you have coming. Well, as uh, you stated, the album is called Small Boy, the Industry Giant. Because in every way, shape, form or fashion, I want to spread what I can 
as far as my gift is concerned, all up and through the industry. Whether it's voice overlays, movies, commercials, whatever it is, music, definitely music. Uh, I, I plan on being there. You're going to see my big face somewhere in the mix. Right. And I mean, tell them about the small boy movie, too. You know? Oh, <laughs> I forgot to tell y'all. We're going to make a movie. <laughs> so, yeah, please, Houston, get ready because your boy is something different. I'm a different kind of nut. Y'all going to find that out. But I can jam my ass off. Y'all going to find that out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Anything you want to say to the new fans that you've gained, the, the people watching you, the one that's been listening to your, your, you know, the ones that's been listening to your music the last few days? I want to say God bless every last one of you for, for giving me the time to listen, giving me the, the fire emojis, the, the awesome, the good job, the, the positive feedback period and i also want to thank the haters because you are like fuel on an already burning greek fire so yeah um yes i'm looking forward to making more fans and keeping the ones that i have so that means more hotness more hotness more hotness from hustlers playground tv baby support that you know what i'm saying subscribe check the album out click like and I promise you, as time progresses, you won't be disappointed in no way, shape, form, or fashion. Now, when your Playboy got something to do with it. Yes, sir. And we out.